All right, hey, what is going on, guys? My name is Slickmoff, and I'm back again with another video. And in this one, we're going to be speculating a little bit on Batman the Telltale Series Episode 2 and talking a little bit about our thoughts on Batman the Telltale Series Episode 1. And with me, I have a very special guest. Go ahead and introduce yourself, man. What's going on, everyone? I'm Inferno Kun. I do primarily Telltale games on my channel. I cover everything they put out. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely recommend checking out his channel, especially if you're into, you know, like The Walking Dead Season 3, which I know, I mean, I really am. I love The Walking Dead Season 1 and 2, uh, but I just don't cover it on my channel, of course, because, you know, I focus on Batman and DC Comics and, and these sort of things. So if you're into, you know, news and, and all those sort of videos for other Telltale games, such as The Walking Dead and things like that, then I definitely recommend checking out his channel. So before we get into speculating on Episode 2, let's just briefly recap our reviews of Episode 1. I'll go ahead and start well, with me and then you can go ahead and give your thoughts yeah. as well. Um, yeah. First of all, for you know episode one, I really enjoyed it, and as I talked about in my review, uh, my expectations were pretty high for the, for the episode because uh, you know I, I expect great things from Telltale Games, and they really delivered on it for this episode. I really enjoyed it, and uh, you know beyond a little bit of frame rate lag in the opening of the game was really my only complaint, and that's a technical complaint, and it might have been my PlayStation Four. Who knows what the the deal was there? But um, yeah, I really enjoyed the first episode. I give it a solid nine out of ten. All right. Well, it was a pretty enjoyable experience. I loved it. You know, the uh, going and switching between from Bruce to Batman felt like it was just two different characters in one game. And it was definitely really awesome. The story caught me off guard with how, you know, awesome it was and everything about it. Yeah, the, uh, the frame rate drops and everything were quite annoying, but you still get a great experience. And I have to agree to give it like a 9 out of 10. Yeah, one of the um, the things about the story that actually really caught me off guard getting into the speculation for episode two is the way in which the Falcone thing resolved. I was totally not expecting this in, in the playthrough at all, and, and that is basically, unless I'm missing something or misunderstanding it, and that is that the Falcone, Falcone's basically put away at the end of episode one, regardless of what your choices are. If I'm not mistaken, whether you arrest him or Im impale him, <laughs> you throw <laughs> through the stick thing, whatever, uh, he gets put away for life, and if, whether you give the news to Vicky or to to um to uh jimmy g either way he's gonna get locked up because he has the evidence against him so that was really surprised me because i thought that falcone was gonna be in there for the long run and definitely towards the middle of the episode i was getting vibes of the wolf among us you know where at first yeah. you think it's this villain and then it's not and then it's not and then you get to the big bad guy i think that we're gonna be getting something similar here and it's not gonna culminate fully until maybe episode three or four yeah, I feel like uh, Falcone was definitely done, like, great properly, and I feel like for some reason that we aren't done seeing him, he probably could play a factor in the various episodes because of the beef that, you know, uh, Oswald probably has with him. Oh, yeah, I totally forgot about that. And, I mean, the thing about it is, I mean, it is a Batman universe, so nobody stays in prison for long, nobody stays in Arkham Asylum yeah. for long, <laughs> and I really feel as though the, the arc that was established in Episode 1 uh, Falcone really, I mean, you can see that's one of the things that I thought worked really well for the episode, and that is at the end where you so, the, there's sort of this heart-to-heart -heart moment between uh, Bruce, Batman, and Falcone where, you know, you can see oh. that they that Batman really actually trusts Falcone he believes what Falcone is saying in that moment, and and uh, what, what Falcone says, I think you really sort of resonate with what he's saying and you believe him, and he's, he says something to the effect of, we're being played and, uh, I mean, I think that Batman comes to that realization as well and the only thing that he doesn't really believe at the very end, and, and even in a way he sort of does believe it when he, you know, storms into the Batcave with Alfred is when he is essentially told that Thomas and Martha are the biggest, or were the biggest, gangsters in Gotham. But at the same point, I do feel as though that there's some twist with that, you know what I mean? I feel as though in episode yeah. two we're going to uncover, because the fact of it is... Thomas and Martha Wayne are not bad guys, um, and I don't think that Telltale would take the, the the liberty to make them bad guys. I feel like that would be uh, maybe maybe a mistake on on that path. But maybe it's I'm oversimplifying something that's more complicated in the story. Yeah, I feel like uh, definitely Bruce isn't taking it very well. He is going to take down anybody that stands in his way, and he's like clouded by what he saw in that picture. He's kind of you know misguided, and he's looking for answers, and he's definitely going to go ahead and try to at least you know find them. And it may not be what he expected, or it may be what he expected, but that's what I feel like is going to happen between, you know, him, Falcone, and the Wayne family actually being uh, like that. But I feel like, uh, as of right now, with the choice to, you know, go to the GCPD with the evidence or the Vicky Vale, I feel like, okay, um, so the 
at the end of the teaser for me, uh, Vicky said that she owes me one. So I'm kind of thinking that, okay, you know, maybe she can actually help out with clearing the Wayne family name, of course. And that would be, you know, really, really cool. Yeah, uh, actually, for episode one, it was something that really caught me off guard is I looked at the choice and for uh, to, to give a, um, a an excerpt or to give a word on, you know, the fact that of getting exposed, you know, the Wayne family getting exposed after the press conference and only 5% of people on PlayStation 4 when it first came out that this may have changed. Um, didn't give a a blurb to Vicky Vale, and honestly, I I was not expecting it to be that slim. But I honestly felt that it was the best thing to do to just remain quiet and, I guess, let the lawyers handle it. <laughs> Clearly, not the <laughs> yeah. best choice. So I'm interesting to see how that culminates. I feel as though the the choice that I want to see spill over the most into episode two, and I really want to see them delve into, is actually the pretty much as far as I'm concerned, the final choice of the game, and that is to either brutalize or to arrest Carmine Falcone. And you have the Gotham News Chopper watching you, much like they were uh, at the beginning. Of the game with your fight with uh, Selena, and I really want to see that that choice have an impact on on what type of Batman you are, and I want to see them report on whether or not we broke the guy's arm in the torture scene. I really want to see those kind of scenes have an influence on the game, and it's great to see you know the the, the Gotham City News Jack Ryder reporting what happened and what Batman did, but I also want to see the effect that it has on the populace. You know what I mean? We we, yeah. did, we did see how the news reports it differently. We got that. I want to see how the public directly perceives Gotham. All ten million people that live in Gotham, they are changing their opinion on Batman. I want to see that have an influence on maybe the election, not necessarily directly, but I just want to see that spill over to the general populace, you know, in episode two. Yeah, definitely. I, I would love to see basically like different things happen depending on, you know, how bad of a Batman you're going to you're going to be. Right. And like the the beating of that guy you had upside down in the warehouse, that could be, you know, one of the things. And I feel like, you know, either brutalizing him, you might have uh, different uh, outcomes with uh, Renee Montoya. She's one of the detectives that are, you know, doesn't really like Batman too much. But, you know, Gordon, he he might actually have some different feelings as well. And that can actually, you know, affect, you know, that one thing can affect your relationship with Gordon, with Renee, with the whole city, how they view Batman. Right. And that leads to a world of possibilities. Speaking of Renee Montoya, didn't she shoot him twice? Didn't she yeah. try to shoot him twice? She, well, yeah. no, 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 no. Maybe not on the skyscraper scene. Maybe that was somebody else. But the yeah. cops <laughs> shot at Batman twice. And I don't know how he got out of that skyscraper scene. They shot like 20 shots at him. <laughs> that's kind of but that's another story for another day. I, I mean, he does have bulletproof armor. And also, I was worried about Falcone maybe getting shot. But that's the thing about it is, though, right? I mean, if you brutalize Falcone, I, I'm curious as to whether or not that serves favorably with the Gotham people. Because the fact of it is, the Gotham people don't like Carmine Falcone. That's the, I mean, they don't like... They know Everybody knows that he's a gangbanger. Everybody knows he's a mob boss that's above the law. He manipulates elections. And everybody knows this. Nobody likes the guy. But at the same point, at the same point, I don't feel as though the, the people of Gotham are rejoicing at seeing somebody impale somebody else, right? Yeah. Uh, I think that they would be m probably more happy with seeing him arrested and just, you know, hung up there for the police to take care of. Yeah, uh, that kind of leads into the choice, you know, give it to uh, Vicky or Gordon. Right. Because, you know, with the media, you got you got to reach everyone. But the GCPD, they go ahead and do their investigation and do it kind of quietly. And the media, they kind of, you know, puts out that, hey, Falcone did all this stuff. Would you want to, you know, vote for somebody that he is endorsing like Mayor Hill? And mm. I feel like, you know, that could just be one of the choices that could actually affect, you know, the election and various things as well. So as per the, uh, the the Wolf Among Us thing I talked about earlier, would you say that that's an accurate sort of depiction of, of, of kind of the general story that we're getting here and that Falcone, you know, he's not the he's not the big picture here. There's going to be some reveal at some point, and I feel as though it's going to be a big name Batman supervillain because we can't play a full ep you know a full season of any Batman game without getting any any of these classic villains. Of course, we have Harvey Dent in the mix, but he's not Two Face yet. So I'm talking about um, you know the Riddler. I'm talking about maybe the Joker, which they may yeah. be fearful of doing with uh, you know. Basically, you know, the, the 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 trick in Arkham Origins, the big reveal there. I feel as though they may be skeptical to basically have the Joker at the head of this whole master plan, especially because he's not that kind of character to manipulate a master plan and trick Bruce Wayne into thinking that his parents are, you know, mob bosses and these sort of things. But also, one thing that really struck me about Episode 1, and this is why I, th I think it's going to be really important in Episode 2, is when Batman comes into the Batcave and he confronts Alfred about, uh, you know, being basically, you know, bad guys are funding crime and you know these sort of things is mm -hmm. that alfred has a strange sense of resign on his face almost a strange sense of acceptance or that he had hid something from batman did you get that vibe as well 
Yeah, I felt like yeah. that at the end mostly when he was like, oh, swear to me that you weren't involved in this or that we weren't involved in this. And I just felt like there has to be something else that, you know, Alfred just isn't telling or there has to be something that is different going on. So are we in agreement that Thomas and Martha are probably probably weren't bad guys? They probably weren't, you know, crime lords or anything like that. And the fact of it is, I mean, that's the thing about episode one. I mean, they have, them being pictured with Falcone doesn't mean that they're bad guys. I mean, you have you could get pictures of Thomas and Martha Wayne with the cobble pots, which would per, be perceived to be bad guys now, I guess, and and all kinds of different people because that's just the the oligarchy of Gotham. That's just the higher ups, and you've got to you've got to talk to them anyhow because you're just at that point of prestige. Much in the same way that Bruce Wayne had to talk with Carmine Falcone. It's not necessarily because they're you know crime bosses or anything like that. Because Bruce Wayne's a mob boss, it's just because. That's the way it is. It's money meets money. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much all just speculation. You know, they have this ev- this like kind of evidence that they gave to the media that the uh, the Waynes were listening money with uh, Falcone, and now they now they have a picture with them. They're like, oh, okay, it all connects. That must be you know why or what happened between you know the Falcone and uh, the Waynes. So they're kind of just speculating on you know this and taking it as they see, which will probably be changed depending on what Bruce or Batman finds to clear his name. Yeah, and that's one thing I wanted to talk about about episode two between Harvey and Bruce. And that was an interesting dynamic at the teaser at the end of episode one. Uh, If you remember, there was something to the effect where Harvey essentially says, like, Bruce Wayne has a bad name. I don't need him endorsing me anymore. He basically turns away his money. He, He cuts ties with Bruce Wayne purely for political reasons, not because Harvey Dent doesn't like Bruce Wayne as a guy. Of course, they're still friends behind the scenes. So I'm interested to see how that relationship changes and how we in episode two, that's one of my predictions I feel as though they're really going to, you know, build on in episode two is the is Bruce Wayne's ability to impact the populace. And that's one thing I really want to see. Bruce Wayne trying to renew his public image because he's a philanthropist. He loves the city of Gotham and that's where he deserves to be. And even if, let's say even if Thomas and Martha are funding mob bosses and these sort of things, that's not Bruce Wayne. So he's sort yeah. of, he's sort of caught in the crossfire of all this. And I want to see Bruce Wayne waging the war against um, the the sort of populist uprising against him, which is really sort of not, not right. It's not it's not accurate and, and doesn't represent Bruce Wayne accurately. Yeah, because basically there isn't anything that Batman could do to clear you know Bruce Wayne's name. It has to be up Absolutely. to Bruce and how he basically handles the media and all that kind of stuff going after him. And we don't have Harvey on our side anymore. He isn't you know following us or anything or helping us out like he used to be, but. You know, there has to be something that Bruce can actually do to, you know, regain the public image back of his family. Yeah, so, quick speculation. Do you think that we're going to, the, the arc is going to finish, the, the, the arc that we have now of basically, because of course the whole game is not going to be based off uncovering, you know, the, the, the legacy of Bruce Wayne. And that's basically where we ended. That was the cliffhanger of episode one. And looking forward to the future episodes, um, episode three, I think, indicates a, a, a massive shift in where the game's going. It's called... Um, some, the New World Order is the name yeah. of the episode. If you read that, it, it's like yeah, a did. creepy picture of Oswald Cobblepot. In episode five, it looks like Gotham is on fire in an apocalypse. So the, mm-hmm. the point is, I think that the, the game is going to go through a considerable shift uh, in terms of, of, of story arc of what we're going to be looking at here. And, of course, Oswald Cobblepot's not behind it all. So um, I, I was wondering if you have any speculations of, of how that's going to sort of continue in episode two in terms of maybe a particular villain i mean do you, do you even agree with my speculation that we're going to see some super villain at some point in uh you know like the riddler or something like that at some point yeah definitely I, uh yeah. From what i was thinking kind of like thinking about is that okay so we have harvey who's trying to run for mayor he isn't really uh, helping out or having bruce you know help him out anymore so then we have uh oswald he wants to you know get rid of uh, falcone which happened but i feel like you know either way what you go with uh harvey or a penguin, those could be two possible villains that could be made based on Bruce Wayne's choices or oh, based yeah. on what happens. That's what I feel that like. That would be awesome. And one final thing that I want to talk about is Batman and Catwoman. And speaking of choices affecting uh, relationships and characters, uh, well, first of all, I'd like to know your thoughts on the relationship aspect because you did see at the end of episode one, there's definitely a big tease at a love romance yeah. between them. You saw that, right? Yeah, I did. Okay, you kind of moaned. Did you? Do you not like that? Or no, it was okay. a happy moan. 
Oh, okay. oh, good. Okay, that's good. Because <laughs> that, that that well, that is one of those things that uh, it, it's it's sort of divisive in a way. I mean, you see it in the comics in Batman Hush, but it's also it's also some of those things where I feel as though it can feel very forced. It can not feel right, and that that's one of those things I would love to see be able to be impacted in a choice. And that that teaser we definitely saw. Uh, leaning in a little bit as, as if they're sort of in a relationship. But then again, in episode one, there, I didn't really get the precedent that a, that a relationship was was in development. And also, we have to keep in mind as well that if a love you know bond starts forming, then Batman is dating Catwoman and Harvey Dent is dating Selena Kyle. That is <laughs> yeah. the love triangle of the century right there. I feel yeah. that they're going to do it because, you know, Telltale Games, they love drama, right? I mean, that is the biggest drama piece you will ever see in the freaking world, man. Yeah, what I feel like if you, you know, uh, probably in episode two, if you like, you know, go at Selena, she probably will act different to you if you meet her in person as Bruce Wayne, because, you know, obviously the detention is there between Batman and Catwoman. And I don't really have a problem with that because I think that they are uh, both, you know, great relationship pieces. They actually, you know, they have similarities, but, you know, Catwoman just in it for the money. And I'm not I'm not sure, you know, whether or not. I feel like okay, it would be a great idea to you know pursue that rela- that relationship and possibly you know uh, have Harvey be a bit suspicious about you know what's going on with uh, between Bruce and Selena. That'd and be that's the thing weird. is that Harvey Dent doesn't know that Batman is Bruce Wayne. Yeah. So what if he realizes by the means that Batman and Catwoman are having a relationship? Oh my god! I mean that <laughs> th- that's the drama front, and then you have the whole other front. I mean, I really feel like this game's gonna pick up. But, you know, this was, episode one was a great setup, but I feel as though the drama is going to pick up on that front of what I'm talking about. I mean, I just thought that 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 love triangle would be freaking epic. I mean, we've never really seen that in the comics, by the way. You've never, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm aware, I've never seen Harvey Dent and Selena Kyle in a relationship. So yeah. that may be intentional to, to foreshadow that into the future. And then you have that love triangle going on. And, of course, the culminating villainy and crime bossery of <laughs> the hierarchies of Gotham <laughs> that are basically, you know, m- menangling whatever they're menangling and that's one of the things that i really loved about episode one is that we don't we don't really know yet we don't even have a total sense of direction and that's something that's going to really develop a little bit in episode two yeah and i can tell you that telltale loves to you know play with the community when it comes to you know shipping characters like if you play borderlands there was like a shipping in there and they you know basically confirmed it and put it in the game and it actually happened and it was pretty interesting so they, they probably won't you know, or probably will not, you know, skip out on yeah. basically that option. Absolutely. So anything else to say? I think that covered it pretty well. We got, we, you know, been going on pretty good. So you good? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's that thing. is our speculations for Batman the Telltale Series Episode 2. Let us know what you thought about this video in the comment section below. And uh, I had a lot of fun making the video. Thank you so much for coming on the channel, man. And thanks for letting me on to yours as well. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to his channel and to mine. The links will be in the description below, regardless of which channel you're watching it on. My name is Slick Moth, and... And I'll catch you guys next time. (laughs)